Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's uh, June 25th, 2024. I'm having a real hard time getting this video put together for you. Uh, so this video is going to cover uh, uh, growing and caring for uh, grapevines in a cold and temperate climate like we live in Zone 5A, Oswego, New York, uh, United States. And uh, and I've written three articles uh, that are posted now on Mindful Living Sanctuary. The first one is uh, growing and caring for uh, grapevines in cold temperate climates. The other one is called pruning methods for grapevines, uh, which reviews both uh, cane pruning and spur pruning. Uh, two different techniques uh, to try and select which one will work best for you based on the the cultivar or the variety that you are growing, the spacing that you have, and the functions that you want those those grapes to provide for you. Uh, and then there's a third article called Organic Fungicides, uh, which in that article uh, I go over the mechanism of action of the fungicides and there are uh, there are several fungicides organic fungicides that I've mentioned in uh, that I've written about in that article uh, besides the mechanism of, 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 uh, of action of these fungicides how they actually do their job as far as uh, interfering with the uh, fungus proliferation such as in black rot, rot uh, I also review uh, adverse effects to be aware of with the uh, both to the plant, your grapevines, or in other circumstances like you may be doing it for your stone fruits like your peaches and all with brown rot. So I thought I'd p put that article up. Now, a disclaimer, uh, I did the research on, on the information for these uh, fungicides, the organic fungicides, but I have never actually used the organic fungicides. I've uh, managed them, uh, the plants uh, differently, and I really reduced or eliminated some of my uh, uh, fungal disease processes on the property. So in the video that you're seeing, I'm up uh, putting in uh, a trellis uh, for the uh, Concord grapevines that I uh, transplanted early this spring before the grapevines actually broke dormancy. And so they've been st sitting there without any support, which is a sin. Uh, so we're going to talk about support, the trellises and all. But uh, the equipment that I'm using here is uh, the Hulk, which is a Takushi TL12 V2 track loader. And I have an auger on the front of it, a 12 inch uh, auger, for putting in these 6x6 uh, pressure treated posts. Uh, I'm also got, you're going to see attached to the front of this another tool called a tree puller, which is designed for pulling trees. But I use this to grab a hold of the, uh, the posts that I'm going to be putting into the ground and making it easier. So these things here really make my life much easier. These are the easiest poles and posts that I've ever put in on our property. <coughs> I should have gotten this equipment many, many years ago. Okay, back to uh, now to the, uh, to the uh, growing and caring for uh, grapevines in the uh, cold temperate climates. So, uh, so first thing I would say is selecting the right variety for your the goals that you have for so if you want to be a wine producer, uh, or do you want uh, fresh fruit? Uh, do you want to be able to make uh, smoothies uh, with them? Uh, you decide and then choose the correct variety and choose the correct variety for your climate as well. And this article is really going over cold temperate climates. So we're growing. Uh, Concord grapes, however, uh, Fontenac, uh, La Crescent, and Endwais are the other, uh, hopefully I'm saying those names correctly, are the, are the other uh, three types that I mentioned in the article. And again, the articles, these articles are on our, on our website at mindfullivingsanctuary.com. So, uh, location, 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 location is so important. You really want really well-drained soil. It's got the, the, the vines should be getting at least six to eight hours of direct sun all day long, uh, well, throughout the day. 
and uh, and you don't want and you want to have good airflow through the area as well. You don't want it in a cold tempered climate down a slope where you have to worry about uh, a microclimate and uh, frost getting to your plants uh, before their the vines the, the grapes are actually ripe and all. Uh, soil prep is really important. Uh, soil is something that you have a lot of control over and that will help to reduce it, the, the better you take care of your soil <coughs> the less uh, disease problems and the more beautiful nutritious fruit that you're going to get. So that's important. So the pH is slightly acidic to neutral, 5.5 to 7. Uh, Grapevines en enjoy a more loamy soil as well, but lots and lots of organic matter. Uh, just like I've said in other videos, organic matter, organic matter, organic matter. So if you're doing composting or leaf mold, or if you got uh, hay and straw, and I put in, I, I've already um, released a video, <coughs> excuse me, recently on uh, dealing with persistent herbicides and those sorts of things. So just be aware of those when you're when you're th selecting the soil amendments for your grapevines. Uh, Planting time, best in the early spring. I do do transplants and planting in the fall as well, but in the spring you get a little bit more time for the roots to really get established. Mulching is so, so important. So choose a good organic mulch. Uh, it's going to help to suppress weeds. It's uh, it decrease competition. It's going to retain moisture. going to regulate the soil temperature. Uh, don't do volcano mold, uh, mounding, mo moving uh, too much uh, of, the, of the mulch up close to the bark or the or the trunk of the uh, grapevine itself watering good deep watering at least w w like once a week you really want to saturate the roots pretty darn well so depending on your slope or you've got a ring around it just just be aware that you really want to you don't want to do superficial watering regularly you want to do a deep watering like once a week pruning Pruning is probably the, one of the most important, th I'm saying all the most important things, watering, mulching, pruning, site selection. So pruning is really super important to, uh, to try and remove all dead, diseased, and remove them. Uh, so if you find diseased wood or leaves or, or the grapes themselves, get them out of there. You don't want them anywhere near, near the area. And I would say... I have composted them, but only thermophilic composting. You really want the temperatures to get up over 135 degrees in your in your composting pile. Otherwise, bury them, burn them, do whatever you have to do. Trellising and training. Like right now, you can see I'm moving one of the posts that uh, because I selected the wrong spot by accident. Couldn't see what I, what I was doing when I was uh, putting the first post hole in here. So, yeah. So we've used arbors in the past for in the past for grapevines uh, that works, uh, but trellising allows you to select the cane pruning or the spur pruning technique, and and that has to do with spacing of the plants as well. Uh, so w w you'll see that the the trellising system we're using here we're using a single cable. Uh, pretty high, about five foot off the ground, and uh, and that will support support the vines. Uh, could it be lower? Yes. Uh, most people will put them lower, uh, but we can go into that in another video as well. So train them based on the te the pruning techniques that you're going to be using. Fertilizing, I mentioned that in this video. We use all organic material here. We do our own composting, our own leaf mold and all uh, so but you may not have access to that and you may want to use a fertilizer as well protecting from pests and diseases so powdery mildew black rot birds and wildlife so in other videos i've gone over uh, using bird netting uh, to try and protect our blueberry plants that does work and all but it is a management hassle so I'm a believer in planting more than what you want to harvest and let the wildlife get them as well uh, powdery mi mildew uh, you know uh, there's you know like people will use neem oil or the fungicides as well uh, I think if you do all the things, uh, taking care of your your soil and making sure the nutrients are all there, we'll go over that in a moment. 
uh, and you're doing appropriate pruning, you've got good uh, airflow, the, the plants are getting all the nutrients that they need, they're getting the water that they need, they aren't having competition from other weeds, all of those things can, can uh, enhance your chances to reduce uh, problems. But we have had uh, black rot in the past, and so we'll be talking about that a bit more. So pest and disease management, integrated pest management, actually keep it, get, getting your eyes on the plants and checking them. Do you see aphids? Do you see spider mites? Are there Japanese beetles there? We talked about using uh, plants such as a Pennsylvania smartweed to in a different location that you draw the, those pests to another area. Compl companion planting, so aromatic herbs, flowers near the grapevines help to deter pests like the marigolds, the basil, the lavender, those sorts of things. The horseradish actually helps out as well. Uh, so just selecting the, the uh, companions that will bring in the beneficial insects and deter the harmful insects as well. Uh, you know, per doing all you can to prevent uh, diseases before they get a foot foothold. Uh, a proper proper spacing of of your plants, depending on the pruning techniques you're going to be using, making sure this the nutrients are there. And if you get into and heavy, heavy, heavy pruning, I only talk about pruning up to like one third of the plant uh, in the article or thirty percent. But I've been much more aggressive in the past when I'm managing black rot. So pruning 30% it, it would probably be the max for standard pruning. But if you've got a really prolific uh, black rot disease, then I get much more aggressive. So pruning and sanitation, destroying affected leaves, uh, fruit, canes, any part of it, completely destroy it. Aggressive pruning is so important in that situation. And I have another article that goes over the use of the fungicides, really the mechanism of action, as well as the, uh, the potential adverse effects, both to the plant and to the person applying uh, the, uh, fu the organic fungicides as well. So still under managing the, the diseases, soil management is so important. So in some cases, I think in many cases, getting soil testing, you can go through your cooperative extension, uh, call your, uni your local university uh, and get some uh, soil testing, making sure that you've got adequate uh, so soil condition. Um, water management, we've been over that. Now, uh, some people have had pretty good luck with treating the, uh, the soil with uh, Epsom salt, like one cup dissolved in one gallon of water. I think this is a good temporary assistance, but you don't want to be doing this regularly. I think you really want to well, work with your soil, get the microbial activity, make sure you've got all the organic material there, and you've got the, the companion plants that you want located as well. And again, soil soil uh, soil testing is probably very beneficial. And there's different types of soil testing besides setting the soil out to the lab. It can be looked at microscopically to see what we've got there. It can do uh, they can do looking for the trace minerals and all that the mac the macro uh, nutrients at all. All of those things can can be helpful. Uh, harvesting, uh, you know, the best way to know when to harvest is doing the taste test. Uh, you know, and you want to make sure that you're, uh, that, that you're getting them before the first frost. Uh, and winter prep, you want to do the mulching in the winter time uh, before the big heavy frosts come in. Mulch the ground all around, remove any weeds at that time. Uh, and then the pruning, you're going to start in the late winter or early springtime. And again, there's an article on spur pruning versus cane pruning. Uh, so uh, managing, uh, caring for and growing and managing the grapevines has been very successful for us, very beneficial, really love it. Now you can see there's the six by six and uh, I've got it so it can be adjusted. Are they tilted in a little bit? Yes, but you can see how I've got them trained at this point. A lot more work has got to be done. This this year is not a year that I'm worried about the, getting any production from these vines. We're going to be retraining these, spur training these because they are pretty close together. 
but I thought I'd let them grow out to this point right now. So if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below, but feel free to go to mindfullivingsanctuary.com and check out the articles that I posted. And again, they are pruning methods for grapevines, choosing either cane pruning or spur pruning, fungicides, organic fungicides, and of course, uh, growing and caring for your grapevines. Thanks so much for watching, folks. I appreciate your comments and your thumbs up. Stay safe and take good care of yourselves. Bye-bye now.